All right, guys, essential skill number two, it's getting exciting here, is I want you to be able to solve inequalities, okay? So basically, solving an inequality is almost, almost, exactly the same as solving an equation, except what? Except when you sometimes have to switch the direction of the inequality. Now, when does that happen? That happens if you multiply or divide by a negative. So we're going to go through these problems and then we just got to remember, just like solving an equation, except if you multiply or divide by a negative. So I'm going to do this first one. I'm going to move the seven over first. So now I have three X is less than negative 14 minus seven. That's negative 21. Now I'm trying to get my answer, so I'm going to divide both sides by three. Let's have a conversation. A lot of times people get this one wrong because they're like, oh, it's negative 21. I got to switch the direction of the inequality. Now, you're not the one putting the negative in the problem here. It was already there. So you're not dividing by a negative. You're dividing by three. Not switch it. So it's X is less than negative seven. Now, let's have a little conversation about buzz. When you go to look at this, there will be three boxes for your answer. And this is how you'll enter them. The first box, you'll put the X. In the middle box, you'll put the inequality, the less than symbol. And then you'll type in the negative seven in the third box. Okay, let's try this next one. So now I just have solving an inequality very similar to solving an equation. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna distribute. I've got negative, ooh, negative 2x, negative 2 times 4 is minus 8, is greater than or equal to negative 10. So just like before, I'm going to get rid of my 8, move that over. So I add 8 to both sides. So now I have negative 2x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Now, how am I going to solve this? I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. It's happening. This is now you dividing by a negative. See the difference between the problem on the left? You are the one dividing by the negative. So this is x. This baby switches. Instead of greater than or equal to, it is less than or equal to. Now let's have a good buzz conversation. So again, there will be three boxes. One, two, three for you to type in your answer. Not the first one, straightforward, X, that one, one. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. There's really no easy way to type in less than or equal to. So all we do is you type in less than and then you type in the equal to. So make sure you pay attention to this is how you enter that into buzz. If ever you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you just type them both in in a row. Okay, let's keep on practicing. Okay, what we're looking at here is you have to combine your like terms first. So the like terms are the 5x and the negative 8x. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. Negative 3. So negative 3x plus 7 is less than 13. And now I just have to solve this. So I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. I have negative 3x plus 6. Okay. And then I'm going to divide. Here we go. I'm dividing by a negative. What happens if you divide by a negative? That means you switch the direction of the inequality. So I have x instead of a less than symbol. Now I have a greater than symbol. And I have a negative 2. So remember, when I go to type this into buzz, I've got my three boxes here. And I don't want to get it confused. I'm just going to be like, okay, x greater than negative 2. All right. Now, when you're solving inequalities, I really want to encourage you to always get your variable on the left. When you're solving equations, it makes no difference. But if you're solving inequalities, you want to get this 7x over on the side with the 4x. You've got to get your x's all together. So I have 11x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 24. I'm going to move that 2 over. I want to get my x's all together and my numbers all together. 11x is greater than or equal to 22. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 11. Easy peasy. x is greater than or equal to 2. Nothing gets flipped here because there's no negative. Now, again, the hard part or the trickery here, or the only challenge that you might be experiencing is how do I type in a greater than or equal to in buzz? So 
so I've got the x, you do greater than, equal to, and then a 2. All right, I hope this is easy for you. That would be good for me. I would be happy. Okay, sometimes when you're doing these, you have um, what we call a compound inequality. A compound inequality is kind of a compound sentence. It's when there's more than one part. It has an or, or if it looks like this, it's an and. So these are ones that have more than one part. So if you're solving an or, and it is as a compound inequality, all you do is you solve the two baby equations. So you have baby equation number one, baby equation number two. So I've got negative 5x is greater than or equal to 15. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 5. And I have x is less than negative 3. Now, look, I almost forgot the less than or equal to when I switched this. It's greater than or equal to, so it becomes less than or equal to. Now, I have to do baby problem number two. So, all I'm doing is subtracting four from both sides. And I have x is greater than or equal to 10. Now, there's an or in the middle here. This is how this is going to look in bright. There's a lot of action, a lot of stuff looking at. So you're going to have, whoa, whoa, hold it, come on. All right, you'll have a box, another box, and another box. Then the word or will be there. And then you'll have three boxes again. And you're like, okay, we got to just fill this in. You'll have x less than or equal to, oh my goodness, that's not how you type it into words. Come on, come on, lady. Less than and then the equal to, because we're practicing how we type this into buzz then the negative three or x greater than equal to 10. Okay, so it's like a number that is smaller than negative three or it can be equal to or bigger than or equal to 10. So 15, negative seven, those are all options. Okay, now let's talk about this and kind. When it is written as a compound inequality, your goal is to get x alone in the middle. Okay, do you have trouble today? You want to get x alone in the middle here. Well, right now it has a 2x, so sometimes I have to take a hand and cover this up and be like, okay, forget about that negative, it's a 12 for a second. How would you solve this? It just said 2x is less than 40. You would divide by 2. So you're going to do whatever you would do, but you're going to do it to all three sides, all three parts. So you go to look at this and you're like, okay, I'm going to divide every part by two. So I'm going to have six is less than or equal to X is less than 20. So it's like a number that it's the biggest it could be. It's got to be under 20 and it's got to be more than six, but it could be equal to six. So let's talk about how we're going to type this into five. Oh my word, come on. I've got this. Oh, Schneikers. Then I've got the X there. <laughs> trying to make this easier for you guys. Okay, put this together here. So you'll look at it, there'll be an X in the middle. You'll put the six here, less than, equal to, less than 20. So once you get your answer, hopefully that helps it helps you be able to enter it into buzz. Okay, what we're talking about here is perimeter. Remember, perimeter is the sum of all the sides. So if I add up all the sides, not just two of the sides, but all four of them. So here's the trick. Here is the, the tip. If this side is 2x, guess what? This side over here is also 2x. If, switch over here, if this guy right here is x minus 3, this guy down here is also x minus 3. <clears throat> That's thing one to be able to do this. Thing two is at least. What does at least mean? At least means greater than or equal to. So because if you have to bring me at least 60 cookies, I wish, you could bring me 60 or you could bring me more, but you couldn't bring me less than. It's got to be greater than or equal to 60. So now I'm going to write my inequality for this. So I've got my 2x plus my 2x plus my x minus 3 plus my x minus three, and it is at least 60. Now, some of you might be like, dude, why are you writing out like this? Why don't I just write two 
times two x plus two times x minus three, since I'm adding those things up twice and then multiplying, that's fine, absolutely fine. I'm just trying to simplify this and be like, hey, this is the easiest way I can think of doing it this way. Now, I'm gonna add up all the like terms, 2x, 4x, 5x, so that is 6x minus three, minus three, minus six, is greater than or equal to 60. And now, just like the other ones, all I gotta do is solve this, baby. So I'm gonna add six to both sides. Scooching. And then I'm gonna go six. Whoa, that's a fancy six. Is greater than or equal to 66. And I'm gonna divide both sides by six. And there you go, I've got x is greater than or equal to 11. Okay, parameters to sum of all the sides. At least, you'll understand that. You are a master at solving inequality.